Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Welcome to another time of praying. Welcome to another time here in the open room. Uh, so glad you made it. So glad you came. Uh, so we're going to lead ourselves again here in the place of prayer. And we'll be doing a study here through the book of Daniel to do that. And we're pretty, we're pretty much right now spending our time in Daniel chapter 6, verse 3. Uh, just up verse of scripture where Darius saw in uh, Daniel an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit. And we're trying to understand what an excellent spirit is. Looking at it from different angles. What is it? How can I have it? We've, we've gone through looking at Jesus Christ through Isaiah 11, verse 2. Right now, we're looking at the patriarchs. Last Thursday, we started with Adam. Adam. Uh, yesterday, we spoke about uh, Abel. Today, we're going to look at the next one in the generation, which is Enoch, right? You know, Bible talks about different people after Cain and Abel, but did not nestly, did not give any detail concerning them. They were born, they lived, they were born, they lived, they were born, they lived. The next person in the line in the generations that we'll see, you know, that God gives that a life and uh, that tells us about what God desires in us, you know, where's Enoch, right? Enoch was born, right? And just like every other person, but the Bible says after he gave birth to Methuselah, he began to walk with God, right? He began to walk with God. It's very important to know that he was not born that way, right? The Bible did not say, you know, from the time he was born, you know, some people will tell you, oh, I've been a Christian all my life. In my mother's womb, I was... You know, when you're talking about tradition on, on any of that, we're talking about something that a cost, right? That that gives an effect, right? A cost that gives us the effect that is called an excellent spirit. I don't care what you were born as. The question is, I do you have an excellent spirit? Are you walking the path of an excellent spirit? But what we hear about Enoch here is the fact that you can start it. You can begin to do a certain thing that will get you to that place of an excellent spirit. You don't have to be born with it. No one truly is born with it, right? Except maybe the Lord Jesus, because he was born as God, right? In human flesh. Other than him, every other person had to work it as it were into their lives, right? Adam, in a sense... And he, in a sense, could be said to be born. They were created that way. They were created, right, to be in God's image and likeness. But that was even then not the end of the story, right? They still had to make a decision to stay that way, right? But for us here, after the, the fall of man, none of us is born that way. We're all born with the corrupt nature of the flesh, Right. So it takes us to make a decision to go that way. Like we've shared on our journey here, talking about the excellent spirit. In every one of us are two natures, right? We spoke about that, talking about Adam last week, Thursday, right? We have the high nature, the higher nature, the lower nature, right? None of them is automatic, even when you get born again. Right, even when you get born again, you only then have an empowered higher nature, but it does not take away your your ability and your need to make a decision. Right, you are only going to be who you have decided to be. God is not going to force that on you, irrespective of how many times you have been born again. Right, your life is a result. Right, let's pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thanks for praying. Thanks for praying. We're just sharing in the morning talking about Enoch. Enoch came on the scene, and the Bible says, after he gave birth to Methuselah, he began to walk with God. The word began is important, right? For everything that's the beginning, right? Walking with God is not automatic. Being a friend of God is not automatic. Pleasing God is not automatic. Having an excellent spirit is not automatic. It is a result. 
It is a result of the decision we are making per second per second. It is a result of the decisions we made yesterday. It is a result of the decision we are making today. It is a result of the decision we make tomorrow. Right? Enoch decided to walk with God. Whatever it represented that it was after Methuselah that he began to walk up with God, we don't know. But we all have different encounters with God. Talking about horse being born again, different times, for whatever reason, we, we got an enlightening. Our spirit came alive we, and we began to walk with God, right? So it's a decision to walk with God. It's a decision to have an excellent spirit. Just like Enoch. Enoch decided, I am going to walk with God. And up there at the beginning. You know, I've heard someone saying, oh, it is my gift to be starting things. If that's all you say and that's all that your gift is, you're stupid, you're useless. There's no use starting a thing you will not, you will not um, move till it has enough strength to be on its own. You cannot have a gift. I just start, I just start, I just start. <laughs> starting is not, is useless if you are not willing to go through. To start has to be because you want to go through. If you're just starting for the sake of starting, you're stupid, you're mad, you're, you, there's something wrong with your head. You know, sorry to say all of those words, but the truth is, it, it's, use, it's, it's useless to say, I'm, I'm a starter, you're start. Right? There's no use starting if you're not going to pull it, push it through. If I start, it's because I want, I'm committed to it enough to push it till it can stand or run on its own. It's like giving birth to a child. Someone will say, oh, my own anointing is anytime I touch a woman, I get a child. That's all I do. That's stupid. Why will you have a child you don't want to, you're not willing to train. You're not willing to raise. That is stupid. That's devilish. That's hellish. You bring a, a child into this world that you're not going to train. You're not going to nurture. Why bring a child into the world if you're not ready to do that? Right? It's the same thing with starting. If I'm going to start a thing, it's because I'm committed to it. I'm committed to give it life. Enoch did not just begin to walk with God. He was committed to the process, right? So enough to get born again. It's important that you get committed to that which you have made a decision for. And that's what we see in the life of Enoch. He walked with God. If all they did was walk with God, then it would be no different from any other person. But we know that he walked with God to, a, to an extent that God said, this man is not worthy to die. Meaning that Enoch was progressive in his walk with God. He wasn't just someone that stayed at the same level. What he, he, he saw at one level, he walked in it so that he took him to another level. Took him to another level. It took him to another level. Took him to another level, right? If you're not growing, then there's probably something wrong with your spirit. Because God's calling to us says, it says we're going to grow from faith to faith, faith to faith, grace to grace, glory to glory, glory to glory. It says Paul was right. He says as we behold Him, right, we're growing. In, we're going to the same glory, from one level of glory to another, right. So it, it, to walk with God is to grow. Because when I walk with God, I get an understanding. I get a revelation. What I do with that revelation will take me to another level. At that level, I get more insight. What I do with that take me to another level. Don't forget, God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. When God draws near to me, I see him more clearly. I see him more clearly. What I see changes me. What I do with what I see takes me to another level. And, it, and it, it's a continuous process until we see him, right? Until we see him, it's a continuous process. He not grew in his walk with God so much so that God said, this one is not worthy, or this one is bigger, right, than death itself. So God took him into glory. He left with this testimony that God said he pleased God. He pleased God. He made God happy, right? And that's an example we can follow to have an excellent spirit is that we not only start, but we press on to know. We press on for more. Just like Paul would say, that I press on to know him even as I am known. 
right, that are malatine, right? It's a person towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus, right? And that's what God expects of us also, is not to do one leg in, one leg out, you know, but that we have made a commitment that will progress in that commitment, pressing for more, right? Because there's also a reward in doing it. We're not doing it for the sake of doing it. That's what he tells us in Hebrews 11, 6. It says that for, for those that come to God must know that he is and he's a rewarder. But my time is up. I'm going to stop. Uh, yeah, I guess beauty got knocked out by, by internet. Loretta, Loretta, anything you want to say? Go ahead. Nothing really. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Bless your heart. Amen. Lale. Amen. Good to Thank have you. you very much. My pleasure, yeah. sir. Good. Yeah. So great, great. You know, just something to meditate on. You know, we've come yeah. to Christ. We've come to Him. But there's more in Him. There are levels. There are depths in Him. You know, it's not to get satisfied with one level, whatever level we find ourselves, but it's to press in, to know Him, to know Him, to know Him. And as He reveals Himself to us, that we walk in that revelation. Right, we 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 test him as it were. The Bible says we should taste, we should we should um, others people in us says you taste and see that the Lord is good. When when we taste the Lord is when I run with His word, I take Him at His word. God, you have said this. I'm going to take you at your word. When hmm. God comes true for us, then we have, we have re received a tasting of the Lord. Then it gives us a testimony that we can share with other people. Right, we can declare his glory with that which we have tasted of him. To taste of him is to take him at his word and see that he is good and his mercy endures forever. You know, may God help us, you know, and yes. teach us as found as word in our heart and yes. cause us to go into deeper levels, you know, of glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, <laughs> there. Hey, Beauty made it back. Beauty, I saw you. Oh, our internet has knocked off again. Anyway, let me let you go. Hey, Loretta, have a great remaining of the afternoon. And you too, sir. Yeah, I'll see you God tomorrow. God willing. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Happy new month. Wishing you the same. That's true. Wishing you the same. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Have a good one. You too.